heat wave across Europe, it's in the media, but they forget the periphery areas that are below normal temperatures. And as these hot and cold air masses mix together, 270,000 lightning strikes. This heat wave is supposed to be the heat wave that beats all heat waves. Let's look at the top 10 European heat waves since 1950. Even taking a look at the heat waves of 2003, 2006, Paris 104 Fahrenheit. And then we look at this heat wave temperature map, Paris not even anywhere near 104 degrees. And it follows as well the European heat wave of 2007, they were registering 113 degrees and none of those temperatures on the map even get close to that. But what is happening in these last couple of weeks is amazing supercell formation over areas that don't generally get tornadoes or supercells. This is the size of hail coming down. And if it's smaller hail, these are Italian beaches. And notice the glaring discrepancy between temperatures here on this map. There should be a variance in North Africa, but it just shows hot, hot, hot. So I jumped over to Null School today. Looks like most of that heat wave's gone, but why is it still in the media such as this amazing heat wave that's melting glaciers? And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt2030 and click the bell so you can stay subscribed and get the latest updates. I have a lot of comments flying on my board right now. Why aren't you talking about the European heat wave? Well, let's talk about the European heat wave and how it's being manipulated for an IPCC agenda. They'll tell you all about the central European heating, but they forget to talk about the eight degrees Celsius below normal temperatures across Iceland, anything in Northern Europe, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, don't talk about that. And anything in Northern Africa that's pushing 4C below normal temperatures, don't mention that either. Just focus on the red heat. So I got on Twitter, started looking around, instantly came across this map here. And I thought, wait a second, why is it so red down in North Africa? I linked this below. This comes from woeeurope.eu. Temperature map is absolutely skewed on this. When we take a look at the anomalies versus the actual temperatures, specifically getting into the areas around Poland and up into Russia, that shows you that somebody didn't really fact check. And now we jump onto Null School today. That European heat wave is gone, yet it's still making the media as this all-time record heat wave that just decimated everything. It's the hottest ever. It's because of global warming CO2. Let's keep the agenda moving forward like a freight train. Well, let's look at the top 10 European heat waves since 1950. Now the severity index ranges as well. When we get up into the dark reds and the browns, that's extreme heat. And as we look over time, is it really that unusual? European areas getting heat waves routinely. Look at the actual numbers in the heat waves. European heat wave, 2003. Portugal, 117 Fahrenheit. And then we look at 2006, Paris, 104. And then we look at these types of maps peaking at 38.2. Are you kidding? That's not even 40 degrees. That's 2C less than the heat wave of 2006. And then we actually look in Paris. It's not anywhere close to being at these record temperatures. Southern Spain, you see where it's turning a lighter color. And I like how they don't even really list the temperatures down there. Just look at this. It's hot. And then the UK. Are you kidding me? It's been below normal the entire heat wave. So why is that orange? It is such a mind game with these temperatures and the colorations they're putting on the map. So then I thought, okay, Bulgaria, 113. And then just look into this map here. We saw these areas in Spain and Portugal and France that were well into the 110 plus, 104 for Paris. But when I look there, I don't see anything in France over 100 degrees over to the west. And even that dark gray, why is it dark gray? It's not pushing 100, it's in 87, 94 degrees. And then even over in Eastern Europe, you see where it's dark gray? Why? It's 87 degrees, why is that dark gray? And then to add the cherry on top, VG News puts this on the front page. Oh, up in Norway, it was 0 0.03 degrees above the norm. And they're talking about warming, yet the gist of the article is July reached the lowest maximum temperatures in the last 25 years. Yet they're spouting warm in eastern Norway, 0 0.03. You realize that's one third of a degree Celsius above normal temperatures. And there still seems to be this concerted effort to push global warming. 
Now, obviously, with these hot and air cold masses, oh, wait, did I say cold air mass? Something that's lower in temperature than the heat wave colliding. I guess I'll just call it limited heat colliding against the heat wave. Getting these shelf clouds, supercells. Now, you got to understand that these are not as normal or as common as would be in the United States where it's completely flat out in Nebraska, Oklahoma, these areas that traditionally get a lot of tornadoes, Texas, Panhandle. Yet they're seeing these all the way over into Poland, Russia, Greece, Germany. Unbelievable, but these photos are stunning. And you know when these air masses collide, you're going to get a lot of electrical activity. Beyond that, going into the grand solar minimum, are, there's a decreased voltage potential, which is also electrifying the atmosphere. Then there's 276,000 lightning strikes over Central Europe. They didn't even count the ones in Northern Africa. The size of the hail... And then you can see why these airliners had to make emergency landings after taking off into these hailstorms around Istanbul. Massive flooding during that time. I'm just going to roll back over the last couple weeks here. Italy. That's something you see straight preceding a tornado front in the United States in Oklahoma during the springtime. Amazing photos, though. This is stunning and terrifying at the same time. If I saw that, I would definitely be seeking cover. And not only is there large hail, but let's take a look at the beaches of Italy. Remember, they had record snowfall that covered the beaches this year all along Greece and Italy as well. This looks very reminiscent of what looked like beaches in the wintertime in Europe. People going on holiday expecting warmer conditions. They were frozen out with record snowfall. Hail now blanketing the beaches. And the accumulations you can see here are several inches deep. The Northeast Italy, the weather there just seems to be getting incredibly powerful across that border area with Italy and France. And then we jump over to Germany, and they've had an enormous uptick in tornadoes and wind vortice events over these last two years. And running into this season, even more than the previous two combined years. And when we look at these June temperature anomalies across Europe, some places are pushing 7 Fahrenheit, but when you really break that down, that's 2.5 C over. But look how many areas are just barely ticking a degree Fahrenheit or so over. And then notice northeast of the Scandinavian countries, you'll see that blue patch well below normal up there. 7 degrees Fahrenheit below and then down around Italy, Switzerland, Austria, Germany border area, you get that 7 degree. So it seems to be some balance happening there. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Now with all the information presented, do you really think this is the heat wave to end all heat waves that just metamorphosized for a couple weeks in Europe during the summer? And if you like this type of information, please support me on Patreon. And for those of you who do not like Patreon, I'm starting a PayPal page as well as I'm going to list all of my cryptocurrency wallet deposit addresses below.